Greetings ladies and gentlefish, and I bring you yet another game in my grind for the IS-6, and again in the ARL-44, and we are here on everyone's favourite map, Kampanovka. And it's a standard game, which I must confess, at higher tiers I don't get very often. Normally if I'm on Kampanovka at higher tiers it's uh, encounter, but then the breaks. Um, especially since Assault was removed. So initially, I mean, this is a tier 7 game, I should probably say, so, you know, it could be better, it could be worse, it's fine. Um, initially, I am going to go around the flank because I despise camping in a top tier, in pretty much any heavy tank. Um, and whilst we're not top tier, we're certainly capable of doing a lot of damage, and we secure that kill on the BDR. Yay, kill that kill securing. And so we have a pop. Maybe I'll get lucky and it'll go through the lower frontal plate, but it doesn't. It just bounces off the Black Prince. We'll be seeing more of him later. Now, you might be able to see that as things develop, not very many people come over here. Um, our tier 7's basically just camp the base. Um, this AMX M445 included, who is a top tier heavy, and I know the AMX does not have great armor. But it's got 12, 1300 health. It's probably able to survive to, to survive a lot more uh, in this game than most of the people on our team. So, it, would you, what, you expect the E25 to push? Or perhaps the Hubble artillery? I mean, never mind. Winge over. Um, if you've seen some of my other videos, I'm thinking in particular of the VK 3001 Steel Wall game, uh, 3001H I should say, then, you know, you should be aware that I don't like camping heavy tanks. Anyway, there's me and an Easy 8 over here. So, uh, I'm telling the Easy 8 not to push because there's two of us over here. Um, and that's a rubbish situation. Let's see if we can get some spots or some damage over here, but oh god, hello. Oh dear, there comes a Type 58. Um, and someone in chat is asking, should he get the Jackson or the Hellcat to grind out 100k XP for the IS-6 missions? Um, and I say, most people seem to prefer the Hellcat, so get that. I haven't actually played either. I'm only up to rank uh, to tier four in the Ameri in either of the American tank destroyer lines, and there we go. Type 58 is dead, but our Easy 8 follows suit. So I'm now the only one over here. Now I could stand my ground, and I'm contemplating it, but that seems like a dreadful idea, especially after that. Mm, near miss. The game's way of telling you, be somewhere else. And yes, I'm in a heavy tank, but uh, if I sit there, I'm just going to get ganked by tank destroyers, and uh, it'll be horrible. Uh, now this thing's reasonably mobile, but it's a heavy tank. The reverse speed on it isn't great, and the traverse speed on it is awful. It's 20 degrees on the hull, it's something similar on the turret. This thing can be circled to death. It's really quite frustrating. Um, <coughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to move up here, try and use these uh, houses as a bit of cover, and just try and stop the flankers um, as they come round. Now the frontal, the upper frontal plate on this tank is reasonably bouncy. It's 120 mil with a decent angle on it, so it has a line of sight thickness of probably, what, about 170 millimeters, Which is good, but, um, you know, French, the French long 90 millimeter gun, for instance, has 212 pen. That can, and trust me, will go straight through the frontal hull of the ARL. And, and that gun turns up at tier 6, both on the ARL and on, well, on this ARL and the ARL B39, the tank destroyer. Um, you know, you can say many bad things about the ARL B39. You really can because it's a dreadful machine. But lack of penetration, 
not one of them. So we're just chilling. Um, yeah, we're just chilling. And oh, good lord, their artillery just managed to get some friendly damage and turn himself blue. Congratulations, dude. And this is the thing our team is camping. I'm going to be honest, I find camping quite dull. Um, it's, well, it's not so bad in lower tier games because people are inexperienced enough to just drive forwards into your gun sights pretty much. But when you hit tier 5 plus, generally speaking, people have learned that just driving forwards is a bad idea. So they don't. Which, oh, good lord. Hello, speaking of the AMX. <laughs> Um, you see, I mean, not on the AMX, it's not very good. And now he's behind a rise, I can't really hurt him. Um, as I was saying, but by the time you get to tier 5, people have worked out it's a bad idea. So, generally speaking, anyway. So, yeah, you have to kind of... Eh, I think, especially if you're in a heavy tank, I think you should really be... Well, give or take, in the thick of it. It varies a little bit. Tiger is a very good supporting heavy, and there are some very good supporting heavies. The Conqueror, the British Conqueror, tier 9 springs to mind. Ooh, I try and put some damage through him, but it hits the ground. Um, they're both very good supporting heavies, but that does not mean sitting and camping at the base. That means moving up with your team, that means supporting them, and that means, yeah, sure, sometimes taking hits for your team. Because, okay, your armor may not be great, but you have the health pool, and you can see I'm trying to angle the front of my armor against this AMX, but. He's got the long 90mm French gun. Ugh, it's this point, I, it kind of clicks again. I, sometimes I forget. And I think, hmm, yeah, he's just going to turn me into Swiss cheese. At that time, he just takes out my tracks, and I have a reasonable repair crew on this tank. Ooh, I'm taking hits from someone else, though, as well. So I try and... There we go. AMX down. Um, I try and make the angle better now. There was a tank destroyer over there, I think. And there's a Black Prince coming down the edge of the lake. I think he's sitting at around E5, F6, something like that. That Black Prince from earlier on. We're going to see what we can do to him. Um, right, there we go. It's uh, TD, I can't remember which one. Or can, oh, it's the SU-101. Oh, sorry, SU-100 M1. And, oh, God. What the hell was that? I have no idea, but he certainly hurt me. So we go over here, and we try not to get hit again. Now, if you're shooting one of the Churchill tanks, and by one of the Churchill tanks, I mean not the Churchill gun carry, because you can shoot that anywhere and it will do the job. Churchill 1, um, or if you get to Churchill 1, shoot it in the turret. Anyway, so mainly the Churchill 7 and the Black Prince. Um, on paper, they have very good armor, but there are notable weak spots, and one of those is the tracks. The tracks run round a piece of hull, and the actual frontal armour over the track is very thin. And so if you aim your shot at the frontal track, it will do that. Go through that very thin, like 30 millimetres or something of frontal armour, through the track, tracking the tank, keep going, and go through hull, and do damage. And so if you need to kill a Black Prince or um, a Churchill 7 from the front and you're not convinced that you can do it by shooting his lower frontal plate or you just want another weak spot option that's what you can use. Anyway, so we put some damage into him um, and now there's a T-34, it's the Russian one, not the Chinese one. We put some damage into him and then we finish him off. And the game is still pretty close. Um, now, where's that Black Prince gone? Uh, the SU-100 on the other team uh, wishes people good luck and fun this late stage, and we're going to put some more damage to the Black Prince in a minute. Um, now, he actually does very, very well in this game, and oh, there we can see. The Black Prince has 171mm meters of penetration on his top gun, on the 17-pounder. I have a line of sight thickness on the front of my hull of 170mm. 
maybe he glanced off my turret, maybe he glanced off my howl, I don't know. But you can kind of see how tough the AOL can be situationally. And oh god, we get lucky there. That SU-100 takes out our track. If he had killed us, this match would probably have gone very differently. Not trying to blow my own trumpet here. But, tier 7 game, we're currently on 3 kills. Which is not too shabby. There are 3 of us, there are 3 of them. We have the slight tier advantage. But the IS, I mean, they've got two heavy tanks and a TD, we've got two DT, TDs and a heavy tank, and oh god, there's the SU-100 and he's got the big gun and I need to kill him. Oh, that was lucky. Snapshot into his face. Let's take him out. Four kills. And oh, suddenly that VK is on low health, it's just the IS over there. But the IS can still be a problem, and I'm just happy for the TDs to deal with him, if I'm honest. I'm not going to go forward and try and get some glory out of it. They're pummeling the crap out of him. And I'm perfectly happy for them to continue doing so. 10%. He's not going to pop his head up. And he's dead. And we win. Huzzah. Now all I meant about uh, the game might have been very different if the is that I wouldn't have then nailed the SU-100. I wouldn't have been there. RTDs would have been outnumbered 2 to 1. Sorry, 3 to 2. You don't know how those things can go. Anyway, um, it was a reasonable game in the ARL, tier 7 game. We did quite well um, and racked up a reasonable amount of damage, something like 1800 in the end. And we got top XP on the team, which was nice. So I hope you guys enjoyed and feel free to catch uh, some of my other videos. A lot of them showing this tank actually at the moment. Um, yeah, bye.